Okay, so we're doing a um, Work Solution 16 here. So have a look in the course notes, find it for setting out the problem. The first bit to the PowerPoint is just really taking you through converting the data to stuff that I might want to use. Um, well the first bit of data that I get is to related to how much twist I'm going to get on my shaft uh, and a one degree twist there. Normally I'd probably want to convert that into radians but that's actually uh, one of the questions that um, the uh, problem is setting up so we will skip that. So we are got one degrees we are told that the length of the shaft is 25 times the diameter We're told the diameter is <coughs> 80 millimeters. So I'll convert that into meters. And uh, I'm going to need to find the radius because I'm going to be using the torsion form of the uh, um, engineer's equations. So I'll find the radius. I've got the. Um, uh, modulus of rigidity, uh, so it's going to be 85 gigapascals. So I convert that. So these are the uh, bits of data that I've got. Obviously, that's going to be straightforward substitution in there. So the first part is to find the angle of twist in radians. So we're how to convert degrees into radians, simply divide it by either 180 and times by pi or 360 and times by 2 pi. So we take our 1 degree, we're divided by 180 degrees and then we times it by pi which will represent radians. <coughs> so this gives me this amount of radians that the shaft has uh, twisted. The next is to find the maximum shear stress. So we want to go to the torsion engineer's equations. Um, we're going to use the, uh, what would it be? That would be the, um, that would be the second column and the third column of the equations. So we're looking for the maximum shear stress. We know what the radius is of our shaft. We know what the modulus is. Uh, we've worked out the degrees. Remember, this formula has to have the, sorry, we've worked out the angle in terms of radians. And this formula has to have uh, the angle in terms of ra radians for it to work. And we've got the length there, although we haven't actually plugged in the diameter yet. So I'll rearrange this so that uh, I'm looking for the shear stress. And I'll substitute in my numbers, the radius, the modulus, the angle using radians, uh, the length which is going to be based upon 25 times the diameter. So this gives me uh, what I'm getting on to about 30 megapascals of shear stress. Next for the uh, okay, so 29.67 mega newtons per meter squared. Next, we're going to uh, look for the first column e of the. Um, torsion equations and that will involve the polar second order moment area. So J is not the same as I but they are equivalent to one another. Okay. So the formula for the polar second moment of area uh, for a solid shaft is Pi d to the power 4 divided by 32. 
just note that uh, the second moment of area for a um, shaft for a uh, shaft experience in bending, not torsion, is pi d to the power four over sixty four. So there's a difference there. So the j and the i do not have the same values, but they do look similar. So I'm going to put in my D and work out what the polar second moment of area is. Here we've got the result. We put our answer for D in terms of meters, which means we're going to get meters to the power of 4 coming out. Now let's look at the, the torque transmitted. So we're looking at the first two columns of the torsion engineer equation. So that's the T divided, no sorry, looking at the first column, the T divided by the J, we're skipping the second column, and we're using the last column. Okay, so we're skipping that one, and we're going to find out what the, the torque is based upon G, angle, and length. Uh, it makes a little bit more sense to use this column as opposed to this column because uh, we're going to have less truncation error in principle because this is closer to the original data. So the torque, rearrange that equation, the torque is going to be based on the modulus and the angle of twist in terms of radians, the polar second moment of area, 25 times the diameter. Uh, torque values tend to be quite low, really. So you know, uh, uh, even a torque of like 10 or 100 can have a significant effect in terms of newton meters. So a thousand or three thousand is a, a realistic result. Alternatively we could have used the middle two columns where we took the shear calculation that we calculated and then divide it by the radius and in this case notice we do end up with a slightly different result at least in terms of the uh, fourth significant figure finally let's um well actually not quite finally i think we got power um, that has been transmitted at 600 revolutions per minute. So you've got to convert this pulse probably into radians per second. So how do we do that? Well, if I am going to do some, uh, from 600 per minute, I'm going to divide it by 60 to find out how many per seconds I'm going to do. So uh, a second is shorter, so I expect less of it to happen. A revolution, one revolution, is the same as 2 pi ra radians. So to convert this 6 RPM, which we normally use as engineers, into uh, the correct um, units for angular velocity you need to times it by 2 pi and divide it by 60. Now you can put it into this formula which is the power formula. Power is similar to force times the velocity. You could give that a go. So uh, it's for a rotating object, this becomes torque times angular velocity. So the power is going to be the torque times by the RPM, which is going to be multiplied by 2 pi divided by 60. And this, uh, this value I know, this I previously calculated, which one am I using? I'm using the last one here. And that gives me the power 
being transmitted by the shaft. And that's it. Okay, straightforward I hope.